the Faithful Shepherd. There once lived a prince whose best friend was a shepherd. They spent a great deal of time together. The shepherd said, when you become a king, would you let people shoot down these birds? No, never, the prince replied. Will you forget me? asked the shepherd. How can I? You are my best friend, the prince replied. I will make you my minister. One day, the prince told the shepherd, My friend, I have to leave the town for my studies in Nalanda. Nalanda was a great place of learning, and all princes were admitted to the school there. As the two friends parted, the shepherd called out, Come back soon, friend! The brook, the hill, the birds and I, we will all be waiting for you. Years flew by. The shepherd never made another friend. He waited for the prince to return. One day, as the shepherd was taking his flock of goats home, one of his neighbors said, Don't you know, your friend has returned to the palace. He will be wed tomorrow. The shepherd waited for an invitation, but it never came. Many months passed, but the prince did not come. He must be too busy. I must go and meet him, said the honest shepherd to himself. He decided to go and meet the prince at his palace. On his way to the palace, he gathered some wild flowers, which the prince always liked. When he reached the palace, he was stopped by the guards, and he heard that the prince was being crowned at the palace that day. He waited with the crowds outside to see the newly crowned king. The king came out and saw his shepherd friend waiting outside with his favorite wild flowers. But he was hesitant to recognize him in front of his ministers, thinking that the shepherd friend may take advantage of his new position. As a king, I cannot mingle any more with a commoner, he said to himself. So he ignored the shepherd and kept walking. The shepherd tried to draw his attention, but the king totally ignored him. The guard stopped the shepherd from moving any closer to the king. The shepherd was hurt. He threw the flowers on the ground and went away with tears in his eyes. He has forgotten me. How could he do that? He promised. That night the king could not sleep. He was troubled by his conscience. That was not right. I broke my promise. He was once my best friend. I should have at least told the guard not to be harsh with him. But he managed to silence his conscience, saying to himself, Oh, all promises of childhood days need not be kept. Anyway, let me try to sleep. When the king woke up the next morning, he found his body covered with millions and millions of needles. He cried out in pain and called to his wife. The queen was shocked to see the king's condition. She said, My lord, you lie down. I will pluck out all the needles one by one. You will be soon out of agony. But when she started to pluck the needles, she realized that it was a hopeless task. In the place of every needle she removed, two more needles appeared. Very soon, the entire kingdom came to know of the king's plight. Hundreds of people came and tried in vain to pull out the needles. The king desperately asked the queen, what should we do? It is so painful. Don't lose hope, the queen consoled. I will go and take a dip in the river and pray for you. She went to the river and stayed there praying for her husband to be relieved of his pain. Go back to your husband, and he will soon be relieved by a stranger, his old friend, a voice said to her. On the way back home, she heard someone singing, If I had a million needles, I would dance and sing. If I had a billion needles, I would become a king. The queen followed the voice, and found it was a shepherd sitting under a tree who was singing the song. 
she immediately approached the shepherd and asked him to come and help her relieve the king of his misery. The shepherd, a true friend, immediately agreed and followed the queen. Upon reaching the palace, the shepherd asked the queen to leave him so that he could see the king alone. He knew the guard would not allow him to stay alone with the king, so he decided to climb up a tree and enter through the window. He saw the king lying in pain with millions of needles in his body. The shepherd took out a long thread from his pocket and began to chant. Wicked needles, wicked needles, your time is through. My magic thread will catch your neck, our friendship to renew. The next moment, the thread swung out to the sleeping king. The thread began to thread itself through the eyes of the needles as fast as light. Then the shepherd pulled out all the needles at one stroke. The king woke up. My friend, you have saved my life. I am truly ashamed of my behavior. Can you forgive me? The shepherd was a real friend. He quickly embraced the king and asked, Can we now be friends forever? I shall never forgive myself for having forgotten you, the king replied. I don't want to lose you again. The king asked, Did you punish me with those needles? The shepherd replied, No, never. How could I hurt my best friend? It was your conscience which punished you. You are your own punisher. I deserved it, the king said, and I'm happy to have you back. The guards, upon hearing voices in the king's room, came to investigate. They were surprised to see a shepherd inside the royal chamber. He is my friend. Leave us alone, the king declared. The queen came running, happy to see the king smiling and rid of the needles on his body. The king always enjoyed the good company of his shepherd friend, but the shepherd friend never wanted to become a minister. I'm a shepherd, he said. What do I know of running a kingdom? Allow me to play my flute in the royal palace and stay as a loyal friend. The king and the queen lived happily ever after with the faithful shepherd to serve them.